Oh boy, here we go. So I've been a big fan of video games for a long time, and one genre that I absolutely love is the horror genre. There's something about games such as Outlast or Alien Isolation where being in control the entire time and being hunted down is so fun, but at the same time so horrifying to me. It's a genre that I genuinely can't stop playing and enjoying. The other day, I was looking for some more horror games to add to my collection, and I decided my best option was to look at one of those iceberg lists to find some interesting games. Now, if you don't know what an iceberg list is, it's basically a list that shows an image of an iceberg, and the further down you get, the more disturbing something is or the more obscure it is. Take the disturbing movie iceberg. At the top, you have your standard movies, Child's Play, The Ring, The Conjuring, and other movies like that. Those movies are pro probably everyone's heard of, but as we reach the bottom, there are movies such as Genki Genki, Snuff R73, and, and Fetus Munchers? What the fuck? These are much more disturbing films and genuinely much more obscure. Even movies such as Snuff R73 are illegal. So naturally, after figuring out that one for video games existed, I was incredibly excited to see what was on it. And boy, it did not disappoint. In this video, I'm going to go through each tier and see what games are on there and talk about them. Starting with tier one, I won't go into depth with this as much considering the games genuinely are all pretty well known and don't really need to have anything said about them. Along with that, this tier is very broad as it includes games such as Counter-Strike and Silent Hill. Of the games on tier 1, we have Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, Five Nights at Freddy's, Wolfenstein, Silent Hill, Mortal Kombat, Undertale, Doom, Resident Evil, Yandere Simulator, Doki Doki Literature Club, Grand Theft Auto, Slenderman, Left 4 Dead, Last of Us, and Bioshock. Now, Tier 2 is a bit of a different story from Tier 1, as these games are much less well known than Tier 1, so I will go into much more detail here. Starting off, we have World of Horror. World of Horror is a nod to Lovecraftian horror in a 1-bit retro graphic style. The game takes place in the Japanese town, and is shaped like an RPG title, in which you can select from multiple characters and pick your own backstory. After that, you must pick a rival that will threaten your town. Each rival that you pick in the game will change your playstyle. For instance, one rival won't let you run away from an encounter. From there, you are given investigations to play through and there are five investigations, and each will last you half an hour to an hour, granted that you survive. Throughout the game, you have to manage your health, sanity, and your time. In the game, you have a counter called the Doom Counter, which is filled up by performing basic tasks. Reach 100 on the Doom Counter, and you die. No matter what, if you die anywhere throughout your journey, the game will end and you'll be forced to start over. The creepiness factor comes from the monsters that you're forced to face throughout this game. Some of them are downright terrifying, despite the old graphics and black and white art style. Along with that, some events that can happen are also deeply disturbing. Events such as melting your own face, sacrificing children, and pulling your eyes out. All in all, I highly recommend this game to anyone looking for a good retro-type horror game. Yumeniki, or Dream Diary in English, follows a girl named Madotsuki as she dreams. The goal of the game is to gather 24 effects. Each effect changes the character's appearance and provides the character special abilities. Besides collecting the effects, there's almost no other plot to the game, and most of the plot is left up to speculation. The player will encounter numerous surreal creatures, such as the Madamode, Strober, Shitaisan, a man that's literally just hit by a car, E, -E Man, a, a jellyfish, and probably the most terrifying creature of all, a fucking frog. This game is also known for having the iconic character Uboa, where if you turn the lights off in Poniko's house, there is a 1 in 64 chance that Uboa will spawn. And touching him leads you to... Um... This... Place. Not to mention the soundtrack that plays when Uboa spawns, and the place he teleports you to, is downright terrifying.
Now for this next game, I am going to issue a trigger warning as the game is genuinely disgusting and has no right to be an actual game based off of the subject matter. I will keep this as short as possible. Super Columbine Massacre RPG is a game based off of the Columbine school shooting. It takes place on the morning of April 20th, 1999 and has the player relive the day playing as Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, the two men responsible for the shooting. This game is played as an RPG and is probably one of the most disgusting games on Tier 2. There's nothing more to be said. Hatred is a shooter game in an isometric perspective. The player plays as a mass murderer who hates the world and everyone who lives on it and embarks on a genocide crusade. The player must stay alive by regenerating health. The only way to do this is by performing summary executions, an execution in which a person is captured and executed within a short amount of time. Hatred revolves around a man on a murder spree, leaving bodies of civilian and NYPD officers behind him. During his mission to commit the spree, he plans to commit suicide and kill millions of people by blowing up a nuclear power plant. Near the end of the game, he enters the nuclear power plant, killing security guards and overloading the nuclear reactor. Police catch up to him and shoot him multiple times in the chest, to which he laughs before shortly activating an explosive, completely destroying New York City. Hatred was viewed so negatively when it released that the ESRB rated it as an adults only game, which is one of the rarest age ratings to get. The Witch's House follows a girl named Viola, who wakes up in the middle of a forest and discovers that the only way out is blocked off by roses. Her only option is to enter a house nearby and find a means of escape. As she enters the house, there's a note that reads, Come to my room. The house then transforms and she is locked in. As she explores the house, she finds diary entries, which details a girl named Ellen and her illness and neglect as a child. Ellen killed her parents due to this neglect and formed a contract with a demon. The demon promises Ellen that if she kills more people and gives him their souls, he will cure her illness. The game's disturbing factor comes from the decisions the player is forced to make in order to progress the story. The story includes small things such as cutting off the limbs of a teddy bear to feeding a live frog to a snake. The game has a creepy atmosphere to it and is filled with jump scares that can easily shock any player. Eve follows a young girl named Eve, visiting an art gallery with her parents. She wanders off on her own around the art gallery while her parents are at the reception desk. When she views a painting called Fabricated World, the lights start to flicker, and as the flickering comes to a stop, she finds out that everyone has disappeared and she is all alone. As she wanders around the empty art gallery, she is constantly attacked by the art. These include the death of the individual, the mistake, blue doll, and red eyes. Each of these art pieces are incredibly disturbing in their own way. Corpse Party is a survival horror styled video game franchise. The games are linear horror monster adventure games mixed with small RPG mechanics. It's played top down in an isometric view. The goal of the player is to explore haunted school grounds to escape the school. There are four main games in the Corpse Party franchise, and each game contains a different story. The main game, however, is Corpse Party Blood Covered and the remake Repeated Fear, with larger maps and updated graphics. After celebrating their school's cultural festival, a group of high school students tell ghost stories until an earthquake causes them to transport to an old worn out schoolhouse in a different dimension. Depending on how you perform throughout the game, you'll either get the one true ending of the story or witness one of the many wrong endings. Ale Only is a survival horror game with RPG mechanics. God, these games seem to have a lot of RPG mechanics. The objective of the game is to explore and solve puzzles in a mansion while running from a disturbing looking demon. The monster that is seen throughout this game is called the Oni. It is a tall blue creature with a large head. It has a large nose with giant eyes and no hands. Its body is smooth and has minimal detail and never loses the expression on its face. As seen in the end of the game, the Oni is able to open its mouth incredibly wide, around half the size of its head. Throughout the game, the Oni will never stop chasing you. Oh god, of all games on this list, Sonic.exe is my least favorite one as to how stupid it is. Sonic.exe originated off of a creepypasta entitled Sonic.exe. I always thought that the story was stupid and I still hold that opinion. If you have not heard of Sonic.exe, 
The gist of the story is that one day, a man receives a copy of Sonic from his friend Kyle, saying that the game should be destroyed. He brings it up to his room and starts playing it, and soon comes to realize that the game is haunted, or something's wrong with it. Sonic kills almost all the characters and states the iconic line at the end, I am God. The story ends with the main character turning off the game, only to hear Sonic's voice coming from one of his Sonic plushies. He turns around to see it has a creepy grin on his face and blood stains under his eyes. Sonic.exe plays out the same way that the story describes. I don't want to go into too much detail on this because I honestly think I would lose fucking brain cells. In my opinion, I don't understand why Sonic.exe is on this list. It doesn't make, make much sense to me. Postal, or what I'll base this section off of, Postal 2, is a first person shooter that revolves around a man named Postal Dude. I'm not making that up, his literal name is Postal Dude. Postal Dude lives in a trailer behind a small town with his wife that is literally identified as the bitch in the credits. Each day of the week, Postal Guy is given tasks to accomplish, such as get milk, and the goal of the game is to finish all of the tasks. The player is given a wide range of ways to complete these tasks, whether they be civil and peaceful, or incredibly over the top and violent. The game does its best to make sure that the player resorts to violence throughout the game, and tries its best to make sure that the player doesn't play peacefully. The game does this by provoking the player and making it so that the player has to sit through harassment and annoyances that would make any player upset. On the final day, the apocalypse occurs, and every character becomes heavily armored, cats rain out of the sky, and random gunfights break out. To be honest, I also don't understand why Postal is on this list. The game bears similar resemblance to Hatred, but it is meant in a more lighthearted tone and never takes itself seriously, unlike Hatred. Off is the only game so far in Tier 2 that I have found little information about. It is described as a surreal adventure RPG. Throughout the game, the player will encounter many civilians. Motives and morals are called into question, as none of the characters are typically good or evil. There are many games in the Okigawa franchise, so for the sake of time, I will mention what I found to be the most popular game in the franchise, Mogeko Castle. The game is rated as being for the ages of 15 plus, however this rating is based off of Japanese ratings and varies from country to country, therefore some speculate that the rating of 18 plus or adults only may be best suited for this game, as it contains violent imagery and sexual assault. The story starts with a Mogeko, a cat-like creature watching someone in bed. The Mogeko decides to tell them a story, and the game starts from there. The story describes a girl named Yonaka Kuriai on a train ride heading home. Yonaka finds herself alone on the train with only two others, and has nothing to do. She decides to fall asleep and is woken up by an announcement. She quickly discovers that the stop is at Mogeko Station. She gets off the train and wanders around. She believes someone is watching her and discovers that it was a Mogeko watching her. The Mogeko states that he wants to have fun with her if you understand what that means, and summons more Mogekos, which chase her through the forest. She stumbles through the forest and comes across a castle. From there, she decides to explore the castle. This game is infamous for the amount of gore and disgusting imagery sh shown throughout the game, along with the amount of sexual assault that occurs throughout the story. LSD Dream Emulator has no plot or objective to the game. All you do is wander around the dreams as you want to, touch certain objects, and you'll be linked to different areas or trigger specific events. When the dream ends, it is rated depending on how much you accomplished in the dream. There's not much to say about LSD Dream Emulator, other than that it is such an interesting experience and it's incredibly surreal. I can't exactly describe anything that happens in this game, so I highly recommend that everyone checks it out. 999, also known as 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors, is the first game in the Zero Escape series. The story follows Junpei, a student who is abducted along with 8 other people and forced to play the non-airy game, which puts the players in a life or death situation. The main situation being to escape a sinking cruise liner. The game switches between escape situations, where the player plays through puzzles and novel sections, where they read the story. The game features a very disturbing death scenes as well, such as the character being burnt alive. Hong Kong 97 is not a particularly scary or disturbing game until we reach the game over screen. 
It starts with a short cutscene which states that people from mainland China started immigrating to Hong Kong and increased the crime rate. To counter this, the Hong Kong government hires Chin, a relative of Bruce Lee, to kill all 1.2 billion, quote, red communists. The main gameplay of the game is not what's disturbing, but the game over screen, which depicts what is believed to be a real dead body. From my knowledge on the subject, the body is a real dead man, depicted in the shockumentary Faces of Death, a movie listed on the disturbing movie iceberg. I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream is a point-and-click adventure game based off of the short story of the same title. It takes place in a dystopia where a mastermind AI named AM has destroyed all of humanity except for five people. Those five people AM keeps alive to torture. The player has to decide to make many choices through ethical dilemmas that deal with insanity, rape, paranoia, and genocide. This is easily probably one of the darkest stories on this list. Lisa the Painful is a post-apocalyptic RPG. In the post-apocalyptic landscape, women are almost all extinct and only men exist. However, one day a man named Brad finds a baby girl in the wasteland and names her Buddy. Brad's friend wants to give Buddy to a warlord chief, but Brad refuses and raises her as his own daughter. However, one night Buddy is kidnapped, which leads Brad to embark on a journey to find her. The disturbing factor of this game comes from the drug Joy, in which characters undergo withdrawal without taking Joy, suffering from hallucinations. The player has to make choices that will permanently affect their own well-being and their party members. Muslim Massacre, the game of modern religious genocide, makes me incredibly uncomfortable talking about it, so I will keep this short. The game depicts a man killing Muslims. The aim of the game is to kill all Muslims that appear on the screen. The creator said this about the game. Take control of the American hero and wipe out the Muslim race with an arsenal of the world's most destructive weapons. Yeah, pretty disgusting. Mad Father is a survival horror game taking place in northern Germany. An 11-year-old girl lives with her father. Her father performs secret research in his house's basement that experiments with killing people. One night, Aya wakes up to find herself surrounded by her, her father's test subjects. They offer her the task of solving puzzles to enter into her father's laboratory, and on entrance, she realizes that her father intended to perform taxidermy on her and make her into a doll, realizing that he had done this to previous children. Narc is a run-and-gun arcade game. It was one of the first incredibly violent games. The goal of the game was to arrest and kill drug dealers and defeat Mr. Big. The game is known well for its incredible amounts of gore and attention to detail for such an old title. Strap yourselves in, because it's time to talk about Sad Satan. Sad Satan was a PC game first reported on the channel Obscure Horror Corner. In an interview with Kotaku, the channel owner claims that the game was found on the dark web, and one of its viewers sent it to him. Eventually, it was found out that the link provided for the download to Sad Satan contained the number 9 in the link, which Onion Links only used the numbers 1 to 7. The owner stated that he didn't give out the real link as he didn't want to be responsible for the distribution of the contents. A couple minutes before the interview, however, a new version of the game was posted to 4chan claiming to be the real Sad Satan. However, this version was filled with malware that would brick people's computers. The version of the game entitled Clone contained images of violent gore and cheese pizza, as I'll call it. The original game features monochromatic corridors while audio samples are played in the background. Disturbing images referencing abuse, murder, cannibalism, rape, and necrophilia are also shown throughout the game. And that wraps it up for part one of five of this series. I thank you all so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. And if you found this video interesting, please subscribe as I will be making more of these in the future. We still need to finish up this series and I'm hoping once we finish up this one, we can go on to another one. If you have any comments or anything that you think I should do differently for the next video, please let me know down in the comments below. And thank you all so much for watching. Have a good day. Thank you.